guys, welcome to the greenhouse. And today I've got my little helper with me. We're gonna bump up some of these cuttings. They're a little stressed because there were times that I forgot to water them. With the holidays, it gets busy, but uh, we are back in the game and we are gonna get things potted up here. I'm gonna just show you everything we do and kind of what we're doing in the greenhouse this time of year and uh, show you what we're using and how we're controlling bugs out here. So a lot of good stuff today, so stay tuned. Whew, it is getting hot in the greenhouse. It is. Are you getting warm? Yeah, so it's really hot out here. When it's sunny out, the heat doesn't even have to kick on. Um, the, the sun itself warms up the whole greenhouse. It's about 75 degrees, so uh, a long sleeve uh, flannel shirt wasn't a good choice, huh? <laughs> we should have chose something other than those polka dots, huh? Over here are a few trays of my cuttings. I've already gone through and planted some up. The reason why I already planted some up was, well, first of all, they were rooted a while ago, but as you can see, they're all really close together. These are really, really small little cells. So as they were growing really close together, um, I don't want them to grow so close because then they become just bare stalks along the bottom. So what I did was I would pull some out in between so that way it allow more space for others to grow so they didn't become just kind of stalky looking plants. So these right here are some of the cuttings I planted about a couple months ago. So they grow slower this time of year because our days are short and cold and a lot of more gloomy days than sunny days here in Wisconsin. We are zones four or five. So, um, you know, we have to heat our greenhouse. A lot of people are wondering, how are we heating our greenhouse? Um, right now, we are heating our greenhouse today with the sun. Yep, for the <laughs> but, time being. Yep, and when the sun goes down, we have um, gas. We use the gas to heat the heat in here. And we have the hot dog. This heater is from Grower Supply. And um, it works really well. It kicks on and over here, we have a thermostat. This right here is where we control the temperature. So on cloudy days, um, if it's cooler, I turn the heat up. But normally we just keep it at around 62, 65 degrees at all times. So nothing in here freezes. I chose this tray here because this has some of my geraniums in it. I want my geraniums to get a little bit larger because I want these to be blooming and looking beautiful for um, inside of the house for once uh, spring comes and Easter time and anytime really it's always nice to see a flower this time of year. Alright so I'm gonna grab some pots. We don't have anything set up for storage yet. I don't have any of these trays out here. Huh? I gotta get these trays for the three and a half. Oh. And I found a basil plant that's really ready to get planted up. It constantly dries out and smells so amazing. So I'm going to get this one planted up before anything so that way we can have some great homegrown basil. Don't forget to subscribe to the Lawrence Network. So I've got my usual, you guys. Here we go. We are using the Jelly Gardener growing mix. Um, I love this. It's a professional brand, so you can usually only find it at garden centers. Um, it's pretty much like a potting soil, only better. I, I've been in touch with the company so many times, trying to find out if they're gonna be, you know, selling it online, if we're able to sell it. And we're still in the process of having that discussion with them. So we're trying to be able to bring this product to all of you. So I've got my potting mix in there. I don't fill it all the way to the top. So that way when I water, uh, it's not flowing over. So I'm just gonna go ahead, make a hole. And a lot of times I break up the root, but this is so small and it's not root bound. So I'm just gonna leave it. We're gonna put it right in there, plant it in there. And then I always keep the bottoms to hold the water. I'm gonna go ahead and water this. I'm gonna show you how I water this because there's a lot of soil to the amount of root that there actually is here. So let me show you. This time of year, we don't have a ton of sun. Um, it's mainly just, what, like eight hours a day? If that, yeah. Right now. Um, so also because this is a small little root plug and there's a lot of soil, I don't want to wet all of the soil. You want just enough moisture to fill around to the depth of that actual root. 
So you really only want the water to kind of come down this much in the surface of the soil. So I'm going to put that back in there. So I'm going to go ahead. Can I water? Um, the next thing you can water, okay? Mm -hmm. I just, I can't get this over watered, okay? Okay, so we turn on our hose and we go like this. And that's plenty. So I know the bottom is still dry, but those roots don't need the water down to there. And if you soak this whole thing right in, in the beginning with all this soil, it's gonna stay wet for too long and then it's gonna, uh, it's gonna die because it's gonna be over watered. So just by doing it just lightly this time of year, that's the perfect amount. So that's something that I've had a lot of questions about lately is about, um, a lot of people saying that a lot of even their house plants are dying and my number one question is well how and when are you watering because watering is the number one key when i have plants in the house i actually let them dry out all the way then i water them through if they're rooted all the way and then i just leave them until they need water again and i mean really dry to where like the bottom is actually dry where the roots are so that that helps that keeps things from being overwatered keeps things from getting root rot. It helps you not get those little pesty gnats in the house. So now this guy is ready, ready to grow. I'm gonna put him right over here. Can I do? Oh, no, I need to do that. That's basil, but no picking those leaves. That's a pretty small plant. Can you smell it? Yeah, you can smell it. When you're potting up some of your different plants too, you could as add osmocote. Um, that's a time release fertilizer. It's little granules, um, but I'm not going to right now. I do that once I plant up my containers because it costs money. So it would be very expensive to add it now and then into um, our containers. So right now what I do is every about every third or fourth time that things need watering, which is about once every two to three weeks. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get my geraniums potted up. So I'm going to use three and a half inch pots. You can get a lot of this stuff online or at Growers Supply, which is a really nice source um, for anything agriculture and horticulture. Usually I go ahead and clean out these pots with dish soap and all of that jazz um, just to kill it, any um, eggs that may be left from bad bugs. But I'm just going to go ahead and do my thing. So here we go. We're going to get some of the soil. I'm going to make. We're gonna get the pot filled. I'm gonna have to bring my uh, my soil bucket out here. So it's so thinking. much easier than going into these bags. Just get yourself a soil bucket. It can be anything as long as it's wide open and you're not fighting the plastic for the soil. Okay, there we go. So this is really nice. Uh, using these size pots conserves a lot of space. Um, it also conserves a lot of the soil that you're using right now. Um, this is a perfect size pot to start something in because it's easy to plant into a container. It's easy to plant into the ground. Um, so it, it's a really nice size root ball then by the time it's ready to be planted somewhere else. I chose this size pot for the geraniums because inside I have some nice round terracotta pots. And the three and a half inch pot always just sits really nice inside of the terracotta. So that way I don't have to plant them into the terracotta pots. Really nice because then when things need watering, I just take this out to water it and then I can put it back into the pot for decoration. All right, we've got our geraniums here. We've got a really nice root structure on that geranium. Um, before I go ahead and plant them, I also go ahead and take off any bad leaves. I know it doesn't look like much much is left, but this is perfect. You want it to start off with its best leaves. And when planting a geranium, you make a hole like anything else. I know that's simple, we all know that. But you always want to make sure that the heart of the geranium is never covered underneath dirt. If that gets covered, the geranium will just melt off, which means it'll start rotting and there will be no geranium. Let's pretend like I already planted all these up so we can keep the lesson rolling. Um, so as you can see, I did pot up some of um, the little cuttings in here. So I did two cuttings per pot. This is just a regular six inch pot along with the same soil. Um, they already have a really nice um, root structure from two months ago 
is you can see, look at how awesome that is. See that rip ball on there already? It's awesome. So what will be really cool about these is as they grow bigger, I can just go ahead and put these right into a container garden, maybe a couple of these like this, put it into a pot, and this will be a ginormous container for the summertime. So that's going to be really pretty. Don't forget to subscribe to the Lawrence Network. So what we're going to move on to next is I'm going to show you with, um, with the coleus cuttings or coleus plants too if you're buying them from your growers right now. Um, say you've got, here, I'll show you. We're going to move that pan. Yeah, we have a lot of things kind of um, rigged right now. <laughs> well, it's okay. we'll get there. It's fine, yeah, step by step. But say we've got this huge container, okay? This is 18 inch diameter. It's two feet deep. Um, and what's really nice about this is it can hold a lot of roots. So this container here can last you all the way till your first frost. There's enough room for all the roots to grow in. Um, and what you can actually do is fill it with soil. Should we just go ahead and do this? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I'm going to have to go get more soil after this. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take the whole bag, huh? Yeah. So I got it filled. Can I help you? Yeah. Listen, I'm going to put this up here, Selah, and you can come up here. here. All right, so when you're starting a big container like this, this early, I would normally put some Osmocote in there, which is the time-release fertilizer granules, um, because there is so much soil and the plants are gonna be in here for a long time. This is their permanent home. Um, so I will be going to go grab some of that after I plant this for you guys. So let's just pretend we're shaking it in there, okay? And mixing it in. You mix it in in the top, you know, four to six inches of your soil. Um, and, and it'll last for at least four months, which is nice. What colors look good to you, Sayla? All right, so this is the one that Sayla chose. So what we're gonna first do before planting one of these is we're gonna snip the tip. And we're actually gonna go smaller than we ever have because it's already a small plant. So we're gonna go right on the, on the tip of that plant right there, those two leaves there. We're gonna take that right off. So now that's gonna force it to actually grow outward. So as it grows, it's gonna grow bushy rather than just up and big, um, just like these. These ones, I did that too as soon as I, um, as I planted them. And as you can see, look how full they are. They could just be two taller stalks, but they're really bushing around. And that's the secret to starting really any container. Even if you get a plant at this age, go ahead and snip them before you put them in your container. You'll end up with a lot bigger and bushier containers well, throughout the season. Flower? Yeah, okay, so put it right here, make a hole. So Sayla's gonna go ahead and make a hole. It's always, oh, not that deep. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good, that's good. It's always good to get the kids involved. So put it there, not too deep, that's good, that's good. Now put the dirt around it. Okay, pat lightly. So when you've got this big of a pot too, you really kind of want to pat around it a little bit so it doesn't get lost in the soil once we water it. Let's pick out a couple others here. We've got a beautiful um, pink one here. Oh yeah, that one, that one. That one's really pretty. And a red one here. Red one. Oh, I got a bigger red one over here. Ooh. Um, sorry, Sayla, I know you just planted that one, but can you plant this one in the middle instead? I know for a fact that that one gets super big, so we kind of want that one in the middle so it's not overriding anything along the sides around the edges. All right, so Sayla, what I'm going to have you do here is can you take that middle off for me? Can you pinch that little center right off just like you do when you're... Yeah, good job. Good job, Sayla. See if Sayla can do it. <laughs> you guys got this. Yep. All right, so I'm going to have you make a hole right there, Sayla. Can, can you plop this red one? No, no. You got to still do the tip. You can plant that one there if you want, but remember, we got to get that tip for that okay. one. Okay, okay, she's got it. Use your fingernails. Good job. She's becoming a pro. By the time she's my age, she'll make me look like an amateur. All right, go ahead. Hang on, hang on. 
make make sure the hole is nice and round there now plop it in. you don't have to push it now put the put the soil around it nice there you go and then pat around it nice so it stands straight and tall and strong awesome good job that's good that that's good you don't want to pat it too much otherwise the water will have a hard time absorbing and it'll just sit on top for a while yes okay so now you want to do the red one so we're going to go ahead and put that one there so we're just doing um a shape of a square with a dot in the center so I got a question, how far from the edge should you plant the plants? Because you, you don't want to have it right on the edge, right? Well, these are coleus, so they're going to get large. So we're allowing them to have as much space as they can. And as this one grows, it's going to push all the other out and over. So these aren't normally trailing coleus, but they will be forced to grow off the sides. As you saw in my king tuck planters from last season, um, regular upright coleus became trailing coleus because they were forced out. So that's kind of what we're trying to accomplish here. Yep, good job, Sila. And this will be really fun for you guys to follow follow this container along. Yes. Um, hopefully it doesn't uh, piddle out on us, but we'll see. We do have some other trailers too that we could add to it for fun. We're gonna get a little crazy today. Do you wanna add a little bit more variety in there? I do too. Okay, if we're gonna maintain this container, we better make it good. All right, so we've got some UVs here. Uh, UVs are fulsome. They're kind of like a succulent, but they do really well. They just kind of trail really long, so that'll be nice once these coleus take off. It'll just be kind of creating some nice green color, and this one actually gets a hot pink flower on it, so this will be a really nice one. Oh, so this one here, Sela, we're gonna keep towards the edge, so right there. There you go, okay. Hat. Yep, and make sure the green is still sticking out. Make sure you don't cover any of that. We also have some lotus vine, which is gorgeous. So since we got something trailing here, we're going to go on the opposite side to have something long and trailing over there. And Sayla's the girl to do the job. Perfect. And perfect garden. Yep, and that lotus vine, we, we planted up a couple cut cuttings a couple months ago, and this is it already. So it just really a beautiful blue green color. It's nice and airy, so it just adds a really unique touch. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, I thought so too. Okay, we also have here some secrecia, a variegated secrecia, leaf secrecia. But you, but you can't pick it off. No, don't pick that. No, yeah. we're not picking that one. Right, so I think this one will go good here because of the colors. The purple will contrast very well with that um, yellow there. So let's push that in. So Secrecia is a little bit slower of a grower, but it likes it nice and dry. They use it in really dry climates. Um, so you don't have to water it a ton. There you go. But anything this time of year, you don't have to water a ton. Just a little bit to get it through these days and these months is enough. What else do I got? Ooh, I have some mazo. Mazo is a beautiful um, succulent leaf with bright, hot pink little flowers that trail along, and it's got more of a variegated leaf on it. We're going to put, oh no, that's a trailer, sweetheart. We're going to throw that one right over here. There you go. So, as you can tell, we're using more um, varieties that aren't as like flowering. Like they are flowering, but it's not a petunia or your typical petunias or your typical trailing superbenas or anything like that. We're using more foliages and that's what creates a more unique container is different textures and colors through leaves rather than just flowers, which don't get me wrong, I'm a flower girl. I love my petunias and my trailing verbenas and all that fun stuff, but, but every once in a while, you kind of have to switch it up and create a unique odd container right i like these kind better yeah but what i'm going to do is so right here as you can see the uv and the mazo are near each other and they kind of have that same succulent style leaf um what i'm going to do is switch up the lotus vine in that one so we're going to switch these two okay and the reason why i'm doing that is so we have a difference in the texture that's trailing down that way we don't have these same um two leaves trailing down right next to each other 
we can split that style of leaf up a little bit so that way it's broken up by these two styles of leaves if you understand what I'm saying it just gives more of like a combination when you're walking around and you're more wowed by it it looks more unique than on its own so when we plant something that's trailing too you want to make sure to plant it the way that it's trailing out so at first Sayla had this planted a little bit more this way trailing inward yeah. You want it to trail outward. So however its, nat its natural growth is going. So this one's trailing this way. You would plant it trailing out. So that's kind of another rule. That General rule of yeah. gardener's thumb. Yeah. So this is going to get ginormous. So we're going to just leave it. I think this is enough. We could add more. I'm an overstuffer, so I'm tempted. But I'm not going to right now. But if I do, I will let you know. <laughs> All right, so how many do we got in there for this big container? Um, so we've got five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Nine. Mm -hmm. And they're all spaced pretty good. So. Yep, and this will be huge. So now let's go over how we're going to water this. This is key if you're planting them early, especially if you're planting containers early on. You don't have to water them all the way through because there is so much soil. You want them to have that opportunity to dry out a little bit. Are you going to help me? Oh, okay. One container down, second container ready to go. <laughs> All right, we're going to just put it right over here for now. Um, this is a nice uh, sunny spot. I'm going to grab the hose and we'll get it watered. Okay, so we're going to be very careful. You can come over here and hold it with mama. Okay, we're going to turn this on just a little bit. And we're going to do exactly what we did with the basil. So here we go, ready? We're going to go that way, over it, over it, over it. Okay, one more time. Okay. So I always just wait a few seconds here. I let the water absorb into the soil, and you can actually hear it. it sounds so pretty. Hearing this noise is so good for the soul. So... You don't have to get that close. What are you doing? I want to hear it. Jason wants <laughs> to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so once it's you gotta come back though. Gotta come back here. Okay, so once it's um once it's all seeped in there, then I kind of just go like this. See how like how it goes down this far to where it's wet right there? I'm gonna make one more pass over and then it'll be perfect. This is how I check to make sure that I don't overwater it. So because it's dry right here, this is about where the um, the other plants, the root balls are at this level. I just want it to go down just a little bit more and then it'll be perfect. All right, you ready to do it together? Yeah. Okay, here we go, ready? Go over, over, and over. There we go. Can I take a drink of that? <laughs> if you want. So I decided to go inside and grab the Osmocote because it is such a large container. I want to get it started the right way. This is Osmocote. It's um, little granules. I'll show you. So this is all that Osmocote is, are these little granules. Um, they tell you pretty much three tablespoons per every two gallons. I've been using this for years, so I always just eyeball it. I know what to use to be safe. So usually you already want to put this into your soil and mix it in the in the top four inches, four to six inches I always do. Um, but I'm just going to kind of go around here and just place it in. Okay, we're just going to go like this. Okay, I know this isn't how you're supposed to, you're supposed to do it before. This is okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go like this around the plants. Okay, it's gonna go like this. But before, you kinda wanna mix it in like you're mixing ingredients into a dough or into a meat for meatloaf. Um, but for now, this is fine. Sometimes you just have to improvise in the garden. <laughs> but now that we see some, uh, some more of like a, a drier soil on top, I'll worry about that tomorrow because we're getting late here. It's about to uh, get dark here. Um, so I'm just kind of using the light we have. So, and I'm just going to pat around the plants a little bit. Okay. And that'll be good. That way, 
if we get a lot of days of cloudy weather um, and things aren't drying out as fast, it at least has a little bit of time release fertilizer in there, giving it some extra little nutrients. And that's, that's my little trick to all container gardens. We will fertilize it the next time we water it then. Um, and what we use for fertilizer then is just a water soluble. Um, a lot of times we use Jack's Bloom Booster or a Miracle Grow, anything for um, flowers or blooming that's always perfect. We mix it into our water and then that's what we water it with the next time. Um, so over here, Sayla, you want to show them some little treasures over here? Like. It's a tomato, but what happened to it? Well, well, it's a tomato. Our tomatoes aren't looking the greatest in here because they've been stuck in these little pots for a long time, but we are very, very grateful yeah. to have that one little red tomato. Well, this get out. Are you gonna eat it? No! No, Daddy's gonna eat it. All right, Daddy's excited to eat it. You're gonna eat it? Okay. Is it good? Oh, doesn't that taste like the garden? I'll eat this one. Wait, so there is another one for Jason. Mmm. <laughs> All the memories of summer are rushing through my head. <laughs> oh, doesn't that taste amazing? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good to have the flavors of summertime yep. right now. I want another one. <laughs> That's <laughs> it for now. Well, In a couple days, yep, Sayla. Yep, there's some other little ones on there. Yep, so. yep. Okay, so I also want to show one more thing, and that's bug control in the greenhouse. Okay. So for bug control in the greenhouse, this is the number one thing that all of you guys have been asking for. And we use the organic Monterey BT. It's for organic gardening, and it works good. Like, I wouldn't talk about something if I didn't like it. No, we are not sponsored. We are not being paid to say this. Um, but we like the Monterey because you can mix it right into a water bottle. Um, you spray it right over top of the problem. We don't have any problems now because I've been using it and really, I use it in the summertime too, but I didn't know how well it would work in the greenhouse, but it works amazing. It works on aphids, it worked on thrift for us, it worked on those mealy bugs. Oh my gosh, we had such a problem with those. Um, but yeah, so I just go ahead and I spritz them whenever I see them. And I've been doing that like once a week. And now all of a sudden today I came in and there's nothing. We have nothing. That's awesome. So question, so if there's nothing on it now, would you do like a preventative? Will you still do once a week? You can, but I'm going to give everything a little bit of a break. Mm -hmm. So I'd say in another uh, three weeks, like you could do a preventative spraying once every month. Okay. And that would help, you know, kill any like new larvae. Um, but yeah, we've been loving it and it's been working good. So I just wanted to share that tip with you guys. Well, we just want to thank you guys so much for watching today and please feel free to subscribe because if you like this video, you'll love all the other videos and don't forget to check out Just Life in the Garden because that's a whole garden vlog. Following our garden from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, you don't want to miss it. So many great tips, information, fun family moments, you need to check it out. Feel free to subscribe. Feel free to hit that alert button. I'm, I'm pointing over here, but it's really over here. <laughs> um, so thank you so much, you guys. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to subscribe to the Lawrence Network.